What is involved with a rebuild, of course, is a complete teardown. Every major component should be really taken apart and uh, and uh, thoroughly cleaned because food particles settle everywhere. They settle on the casting gaps here, which I ground off. And that's why white paint is missing there. It, food and flower particles settle here and here and in every nook and cranny and and everywhere where it is possible seriously everywhere food particles clog up everything there is a screw and a metal tab that goes there I'll show you how it looks like before cleaning it comes apart really really easily seriously three bolts there at the bottom three bolts at the top that hold the upper case and uh, I don't recommend that you take apart the entire mechanical uh, gear assembly but uh, but that's really the only way to clean the top because food particles get into it yeah that's 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 food there flour and uh, cooking oil condensates come in through the uh, open grill and uh, and everything is just super dirty everywhere okay so you see what I started here with the nail brush everything everywhere because the cooking oils just just fly in here and then get compacted in you can see some of it in the corners of the castings there yellow stuff every particle has to go and yeah here is the clip this is how it looks like before cleanup there so that's what I mean everything is filthy around this uh, this food mixer so cleaning first in some cases I find that the castings are bad quality you can see how it tears the fiber of paper towels here around the edge because the casting has this very small burr here there all right so what I do is file it away just like so that's that's filed away it's done same everywhere just like so very little very little yeah it's gonna help with fitting this gasket in the background there. there it's gonna help with fitting this gasket and not tearing it and uh, and while you do this you can also survey the damage or the previous the wear and tear in the casting you can see these bearing surfaces close up and you can see if there's any damage such as tool marks like this here from previous operations yeah there's this little sharp edge everywhere inside and outside you can see yeah and uh, yeah I so I do that before before assembly just just here around this part so I filed the case here and but just very gently so all you see is all the filing done on it just very tiny amount very tiny and uh, yeah it files very easily this is all cast aluminum so okay so all the sharp edges are gone just around here I also filed it a little bit on the, from the inside here around this whole oval shape just the inside yeah it was, it was sharp it's bad casting everywhere cheap casting so I filed it down here you can you can see my filing marks way down there that's as close as I can get same on the other side I filed it around the grate there I filed it around where the cord comes in of course you don't see much from the outside because I just filed very little amounts yeah, you can see some filing marks around the 
grate there. So anyhow, it's very little. I filed it here on the underside and there around the rim there was a little burr edge. So assembly is gonna start here at the planetary gear and while we're at it this one is steel so while you're dishwashing it yeah because the filings you don't just clean it with compressed air it needs to be dishwashed the whole thing not dishwashed just washed in the sink like dishes are done and uh, yeah this one is high carbon steel and will rust unless you dry it with compressed air so compressed air is for drying not for cleaning much I noticed that there is some interesting strange wear here so smeared over aluminum there there some kind of scratch marks there so uh, this planetary gear works is this part this part uh, goes in there but uh, something like let me just set it over here Yep, there and then it rotates. So whatever was rotated here, it damaged. It, it did damage in the case here. So what did the damage is this bronze bushing here was set too high. It was sticking up too much. I tapped it down a bit. So now it's flush with the white part here or with the outside painted part here so now it's not sticking up in into this half case ha casing half so how this stuff works of course it's got this part that goes in there I'm just gonna kind of sort of assemble it so this one goes in there I don't want to tap it in because I want to because it's a little friction fit it needs a little lubricant such as grease so I'm just gonna leave it out you get the idea and of course this part needs this spindle the spindle this is where the uh, where the beaters attach and lock into position so this one gets dirty let's see how it looks when it's clean yes this chamfered edge there that that's all packed with dirt usually same on the opposite side of course all oh, this is typically clogged with dirt thickly so it's been thoroughly cleaned and how this works is fairly straightforward this lives in here like so sticking out from here the attachment goes on it and this and this little wheel lives on this side this little wheel runs around like so inside this ring so that's how it's going and you can see that the damaged part is exactly at the center of the little wheel so uh, it, it was it's guaranteed that the damage was done by this copper this copper bushing that was sticking out too much because the height of that determined that that lock ring is there's going to be a lock ring in this groove and this if this part if this copper bushing is too high then the end of this shaft is going to be in contact with the case here so there this is the, this is the actual part that did the damage because that bushing wasn't set at the right height all right so i hope that that version makes sense so assembly wise the situation here is fairly straightforward i just changed my mind and i set that bronze bushing a little further down just just by one millimeter there you can see the difference just a one millimeter down all right so the assembly is fairly straightforward here you grab the snap ring pliers and you put this snap ring in place like so it goes into this groove there that's how snap ring is properly seated and then I'm just gonna assemble it without a lubricant so yeah that one goes there 
and the round pin goes through there. Ah, here is round pin. All right. There's gonna be oh yeah the washer the washer yeah this this very thin washer very very thin it lives down here just gonna assemble it without a lubricant just for show and tell here okay so that goes there on top of it is this pin like so and of course this gear is gonna the recesses in the gear will work and there overlap the pin like so and then in the top groove there this gets installed let me see which color was yeah there's more sorry there's more gold color on the outside yeah, not that it matters but it was this way and let's see yeah the camera is in the way a little bit all right there good snap ring in place yeah snap ring yeah snap ring is freely rotating yeah good so this one's in place yep that's gonna be exposed a little bit yeah one one note about this that it's got a little play everything is worn the shaft is worn down over the years and the bronze or copper bushing is is uh or is worn so that's why there is this play not only up and down but also sideways okay this way i'm bending it there okay so what that means that there is a gap between the shaft and that copper bushing dirt will get in there guaranteed there's no way about it so if there is lubricant in there the lubricant will get saturated with the dirt but really there is a gapless fit it's just not possible it doesn't exist so that's how this one assembles i'm gonna put some lubricant on it this time and every so often it has to be this has to be taken apart and cleaned out and and all the crud and everything that gets compacted in there has to be removed there's really no way about it of course you could buy a new uh, copper bushing and you could totally buy a new shaft that doesn't show any signs of scoring and this one is obviously worn I'm just gonna rebuild it um, with that uh, replacing every single component in it so I lubricated everything and everything is massively greasy now what I did here is uh, of course I charged the gear on the underside and between the gear teeth with this popsicle stick and pushed the grease in at between every gear tooth why I did that is because at the factory where they assemble it they don't care and they don't do it don't they don't do it this way what they do is they just is they just place a blob of grease inside here and uh, and they call it close enough and then it's assembled like this that the case is damaged or whatever because they don't care and they uh, the grease and, and and they don't end up with greasy fingers and the grease is like in you know, a ketchup or or pump soap uh, bottle dispenser so it keeps their hands clean and whatever and they don't really care especially if the assembly place is mexico and or china or whatever if there is no quality control in place you know uh they don't care if the grease gets into the gear teeth at all as long as it's in say one ounce of grease is in uh, that's uh, that's all management cares about one ounce was uh, assigned uh, grease was applied with one pump and whatever it's gonna spread itself no it won't and the difference between a correct assembly and the factory assembly is exactly this the gear needs to be at the root of the gear teeth 
down, down there, and on the face of the gear teeth. If the grease is, uh, if the grease is underneath this ring, it doesn't do there any good. If the grease is inside here, these fins, these 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 casting spokes there, it doesn't do there any good. There is no motion here or here or underneath the ring. There is no motion here, here, or here. The motion and the biggest place of friction is on the gear teeth. That's where the grease needs to be. All right, and uh, uh, teaching uh, teaching the uh, foreign worker to place the one ounce of grease, I guess, is already much much enough task. So they don't bother with the fine microscopic detail that the, where exactly the gear. Uh, the the grease should be so there all right so that's uh, that part of the assembly of course I'm gonna put the snap ring on top I'm just gonna clean my hands and uh, and then uh, we'll assemble something else for the next bit of assembly I have all the components here this bushing was placed into the casing and it kinda it doesn't it doesn't come out on its own. It needs a little tapping, but it's been lubricated. So whatever lubricant is on it, that's all it needs. Whatever you see, that's all it's gonna get. There. In this one, there's not gonna be a lot of rotation on this one, but just in case it wants to, it's lubricated for it. The other parts that are needed for this one or these two these two gears this is going to be replaced of course because if you look at the teeth they are dished out massively dished out look at the top of the gear tooth width width see how they how wide the gear tooth is here and how skinny it is there same on every gear tooth that's an intact full width and that's the worn Part, and you can see how the worm gear um, dished out this worm follower every every single tooth has been thinned out and weakened there you know this could go back together you know it's still gonna run but uh, I've decided to replace it so this is a replacement this fiber washer is also a replacement, it just wore away, it's kind of halfway, halfway between the garbage can and I'm just waiting for a new one. And I placed an o-ring on the shaft here, super simple, just don't tear it. This fiber washer lives down this shaft, there keep going down with it and pass the o-ring this should go on before the o-ring so but because this is garbage I'm not gonna bother with it this is just a dry fit and then of course once the fiber washer is in place this one just moves in like so and the little gear and the gear ring they will mash first I would need to charge the gear ring with grease just as I did with the with the little gear so I'm gonna skip that and when they are together that's how the bottom looks like the there's always gonna be food and dirt on this one all the way up to this point but food dirt will also let me take it apart again all right but food dirt will also fly into this casing here okay so uh, just as, just as dirty as it was before same thing is gonna happen so that's all the grease this gear gets and and likewise this gear ring is gonna get nicely charged because all the gear grease is on it now is just from whatever got transferred from the little gear in the two circles that we did and then once this shaft is properly in uh, it's gonna sit about at about this height and this this gear needs to go on first 
and this is gonna need some tapping because it's the tie's been designed that it's gonna spin once it's down at this thickness but uh, but it's a little big and wide here and they work together you can see how the shapes match and meet I'm gonna keep this one it does have some wear on it but nothing nothing too bad there is definite wear on it and and of course this little pin goes in here as usual and this is gonna be on top and it, this also needs a little tapping down and then this snap ring goes in place there all right so that's the that's the assembly sequence I'm gonna lubricate everything oh yeah I have to wait for the new part first fitting together these two frame parts is fairly straightforward on this part the handle is up and then this part these spikes that hold the bowl is up that's important which way is up because you don't want to fit this one upside down then later find that you can't attach your mixing bowl to it so inside this part here there is this push rod which has a thread at the end on the threaded end a spring a washer and a nut go the push rod is operated by the lever through this white plastic cam this push rod is bent so when the cam is up the rod is raised when the cam is down the push rod is down so it doesn't have any gears or anything inside this is just a two position lift and lower on this uh, on the uh, on this part that uh, holds the bowl so what needs to be done here is just super straightforward fit these two pieces together while at the same time have the push rod through that eye in the that uh, that would be that would be the eye on the second part and I push rod is through it so what I need to do without losing the push rod and everything flip it around and put the nut the bolt and the washer on it super straightforward so now the washer the spring and the nut are in place and uh, here is the here is an 11 millimeter wrench that works and this nut has an, a nylon insert on it and I swear this was just hand tight and on it that's how I took it off there that's about that's about I was really seriously the end of the thread wasn't showing it was just just like so and that's all that was to it all right so now this just lowers and raises and it stays in position when it's up that's good there there that's good so what we need to do next is we can put it on a on its uh, foot or base this part would be the base and of course these three screw holes on uh, on the upright correspond to this yes the camera is in the way so what needs to happen is something like this let's see Pretend you see everything enough. 
or wild enough. There, two more bolts, you get the idea. And then it's, and then we are freestanding from then on. Super straightforward. And it's a more, more useful angle. And seriously, these bolts were so lightly torqued that that uh, the bolt or screw heads are not even damaged. You know what I mean, man power tools or whatever tools just damage the bolt heads yeah just there's nothing on it okay so now it's yeah it obviously is missing a rubber foot there I'll find one or buy one okay so now we can put the top part on which uh, still needs the motor and everything but uh, before we can put the motor in it and of course needs to be mounted so same idea same type of three screws one goes there another one goes there and the third one and of course goes here and just put them together now before you do you also need to mount the cord that goes here and the cord is here, it's been drying there, so it's been washed and sterilized or only as cooking oils uh, condensate on it and it's just yucky. Alright, so just by the look of it. This is gonna be fairly straightforward. Yeah. There. No, I don't know. Did you see that? Okay, let's go again. It just goes down and then it's out of the case. Like so. Just with a little bit of push, you get the idea. There it gets pushed into place like so so then it's in all right now I can put it in place and on the upper on this upper part I got this pin here that lines up with this pin with that hole there and I have the other pin there stuck there so that pin of course goes to the other side there so make sure you got these index pins in place but that's how they came out for me and that's exactly how it's, how it's going back there just need to tighten the three screws and this one is done of course if this, this part is being replaced because it's worn the other part is also worn these two mesh together and rotate together something like that there you get the idea and so this one's badly worn this one is also massively pitted there you can see from the end of the shaft here chunks of metal missing there as it corroded away and I believe uh, the manufacturer has changed the, desi the design because this worm gear you can see these worm threads m made of laminated two piece metal construction I think they just machined it out of a single piece now uh, we'll see when the new piece comes in and between these threads you can see the root of the of the uh, of the thread how it's also corroded it's got big pitted surface and very very coarse there not good and we have on this one of course teeth worn and teeth or teeth broken and chips of metal are missing here and here and uh, there is a chip missing there and by and large in in this line is where the greatest wear shows you can see the dished out surface there 
that's where most of the stress is concentrated on the tooth the ones that aren't broken you can see this is the uh, factory original width of the tooth and if you follow it along this is where it's the narrowest and it's just about to break in many occasions let me just let me just get the camera to focus and there we go you can see there another broken tooth and another broken tooth so you get the idea this one needs to be replaced as well so uh, another part that I'm working on is this one oh, inside this one lives this bevel gear which just goes in there like so and this is the exposed part that you see rotating and this is where the attachments go for pasta making and meat grinding and such of course this recess was full of food dirt uh, this bevel gear that we looked at previously meshes with this one and they run together like so you, you get the idea there and this one is intact somebody might have replaced it before I worked on it because this is impact either that or is hardened a lot harder than this one so only this one wears and this one doesn't at all I'm not sure which the case might be and I'm also I'm also working on this aluminum casting because it's also also coarsely crudely made let me see if I can get the camera to focus on some of this wire edge that I'm trying to show you here maybe there thereabouts yeah that's that's good so it's got a burr edge there that needs to be removed with the slightest amount of filing something like this and let me just make it sharp not there thereabouts thereabouts so I don't know if you can see aluminum filings and metal dust yeah there you can see some microscopic amounts of metal dust I'm filing the the burr off because it tears the this gasket and leaves an imprint in it and I don't want the metal burr edge to be there you can see that imprint from the edge I don't want this gasket to be compromised and I want a nice seal without any tears and snags so that's that story so we'll continue when the new parts arrive some new components have arrived this fiber washer has been lubricated on both sides as it is subject to friction from both sides and now I can install my rubber o-ring and I also have the rest of the gears so there the o-ring goes there this old fiber washer is throw away right about now that we verify that the new one fits and then because this o-ring seals inside of this round sorry inside of, inside of this round bushing they need to be kind of tapped together a little bit tapped meaning very little force mm, there, about, there we have it it's together now the o-ring is holding the shaft at the proper height so it doesn't fall out and I'm just cleaning it from grease on the underside that you don't see now but uh, don't worry about it now the next part is this one this one just lives on top of this and this one does need a little bit of tapping to get it started so what I'm gonna do is I have a socket just give me a sec here I have a socket that fits over it and this needs to be tapped down with a hammer 
just like just like so something like that I'm cleaning up grease from everywhere in the meanwhile and a few seconds later and three taps later we've got this I put some grease on top of the bushing that's in the hole holding the axle in place and it needs to be tapped down yet again with a little bit of distance there but uh, I need all the lubricant there where I don't need any lubricant is here because there's no rotation here there was a ton of lubricant all here we don't need any there the lubricant is needed between the gear that's rotating the underside of the gear and the top of the bushing for the uh, that holds the axle all right so give me a give me just a little bit of time here i'll be tapping it with the same socket or so nah, yeah the same socket will work maybe another socket on top of the previous socket and i'm just holding it together with from the underside with my hand here just like so and there that's about all the force it needs there i think that's that's good at that's good that's tapped home nah, let's give it just one more tap just to make sure yeah that's about as good as it gets okay next one is the black gear this one with the pin now the pin goes through this hole here that you can kind of somewhat see just uh, there's a there's your memory jogger there is the pin i guess this gear could go down a little more just to make sure the pin clears and actually fits yeah just just a little bit just a little more down okay and then this one just slides down as previously and they lock together like so all right i'll be tapping a bit here i'm using this worn and old shaft to line up this pin and tap it in something like that looks good all right here now let's put some grease into this black and and let's see if we can lock them together whereabouts that's plenty lubricant for the next 20 years So good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe adjust a little bit on the length of the pin. Maybe adjust it back a little bit. Eventually they'll they lock together. So do make sure that the pin lines up with the long direction of this rectangle with rounded corners. Because if it lines up this way, that will never work or any other way because that's the way the recess is made on the underside of the black gear. But when they do line up they line up perfectly they drop in place and they must have that groove exposed where this snap ring goes I'm just gonna wash my hands and then install the snap ring yeah that's a tight fit 
I'm good to go to put the snap ring into its groove with the snap ring pliers and I'm not gonna put lubricant on this one uh, this is just gonna be a dry fit so you can see the parts good it's in the groove and it's spinning freely good both tabs are seated in nicely that's good all right this one is rotating freely now assembly note the this one is wobbly the reason for this it's not it's not wobbly it's long the reason for this amount of play is because the bushing that's now buried inside the bushing that's in the middle of the underneath this gear underneath this gear in the middle of this aluminum housing that holds the planetary shaft is too long by this much so I guess there is no load on the fiber washer because everything is just caught up and is riding on the underside of this uh, pinkish colored whatever color gear this is now okay so that's where all the friction is there's no friction around the the uh, the fiber washer. Now the next part is new. And this is the new worm gear. It's machined and not cast and it's not made of two parts. It's really nice. At the end of it there is this thrust bearing. Take a look at how it looks like. There's a, the bearing balls are held in place by let just put it down here. And there, these bearing balls are held in place by this copper ring. There. And there is a groove on both of these plates. There. The grooved surface will be there. The grooved surface will be working together with the bearing balls like so because they rise through this there you can see that they rise through this copper uh, cage this is a thrust bearing there that's how it goes together when it's all greased up you don't see any of this detail there that's how they are together the sandwich there's the clearances in it. There, so that one goes, this whole assembly goes here to the end of this shaft. And we've got two other bushings as well. One of them is longer than the other, like so. And the shorter one will go here because that's why that's the only spot this one really fits and the longer one with this extra lip fits over here something like that so the shorter one goes to the end of this thrust bearing and the longer one goes to the front and they will fit together just like so there. All right. This is how it's gonna look like in operation. So that's where the shorter one is. That's where this thrust thrust bearing is. That's how the this brass bushing is. That's how it looks like. And the gears mesh and drive, and it's fantastic. And if I drop the motor in place just like so and spin the motor there you can see how the whole thing works the motor's spindle drives the big gear the big gear and the worm gear are together on the same shaft it drives the the axle on the on the planetary gear and it rotates however slowly but it does rotate there this this part of the mixer so 
this is just a dry fit and I'm just gonna lubricate everything up and uh, and basically we are good to go for the seal and the cover once everything is lubricated up so I packed the gear teeth and the gaps between the gear teeth with grease and I ran the machine for a few minutes this is how it looks like there's grease all the way down to the root of the gear teeth except on the pink one this pink looks a little dry to my liking and if you remember this is the pink well this is the equivalent of the pink uh, gear this is the one that got scalloped out so spectacularly there you can see the scalloped teeth and so I want to make sure there's enough grease on this one because that's obviously a critical component and uh, there's not a lot of grease left on the motor's uh, arbor and there is grease between those teeth but uh, this is a reduction gearing so when I spin the fan on the motor you can see the motor is running the fastest and by the time the drive gets to the planetary gear shaft it, it slows down quite a bit which is the point of which is the point of mixing food it doesn't need to fly everywhere it needs to be mixed so you can see the pattern how the gear is being displaced on the on the gears gear teeth so uh, I want to make sure there is enough gear always at the po point of fr friction so I'm gonna pack the lid with grease at strategic points such as somewhere here above the fastest above the fastest rotating point the motor uh, motor shaft or uh, or uh, arbor there and uh, I also want to make sure there's always a blob of grease here that goes down with the gravity so the pink gears are always lubricated. So I'm gonna do that and after that basically just install the gasket and put the four screws in. One, two, yeah, three, four and tighten them in a crisscross pattern. Start wherever don't continue on the same side, continue on the diagonally opposite, on the opposite side. So, I'll show you. After repeated test runs, this is how they always look like. The grease seems to be piling up here, uh, flung from the fastest two rotating uh, gears, and always seems to be piling up here, leaving the pink gears dry. So, uh, all I can do about that is leave a bunch of grease still up here so when it warm when the when the grease is temperature rises with friction and uh, prolonged operation it still can seep down and ooze down and uh, and get where it should be the same way to prevent that from being flung anywhere I'm gonna go with packing it with grease there where uh, that arbor ends up and also here so there's no way the grease can fly away from these gear teeth anywhere because it's just gonna be in this enclosure there so I'm good to go for putting the screw so I'm happy with the grease spread pattern and tightening is fairly straightforward I'm just snugging it up but I'm already going in a crisscross pattern like so and I also reused the old grease seal because this is not holding in oil where sealing would be absolutely critical uh, because it's only holding in grease so I just reused it and that's basically the end of that story and tighten that, tighten that, tighten that, and tighten that. The seal is reasonably compressed. There we go. Alright, I hope it's not going to be this loud when it's all together. 
once these screws are tightened here and finishing it is super straightforward the motor mounts with only two screws that one there and same on the other side that one there so that's that's all for mounting the motor there's nothing else holding the motor anywhere else other than it's being clamped under the lid that covers the gearing there so from then on you only have a couple of electrical connections six in total and all you need is just this screwdriver the ground cable this green that was pulled up from the uh, with the extension cord this ground cable gets screwed and bonded to the frame there and then you have this black and this white cables coming out from the cord the motor has these two black lines and this gray flat cable for the hull effect sensor what you need is now uh, hook it up to the circuit board and this is how the circuit board looks like if it's a newer type I'll show you the older type in a sec this one says line on it and you connect the black from the cord to it next to it it says neutral you connect the white to it from the cord and then this one says motor 1 and motor 2 that's where either one of the cables go from the motor it doesn't matter how it's connected the circuit board is designed that the motor only runs this way it doesn't matter how you connect it okay let me just show you that idea but just in case if you have another an older type of circuit board the connections might look like this this one says line that's where the it says brown ignore ignore the word brown the line is gonna be in North American terminology this black cable not this from from the motor sorry wrong black this black from the cord okay goes to the line the neutral will be from the extent from the cord this white and then again motor 2 and motor 1 don't matter which way they plug in so that's all on this one and you have this three pin connector that's where the gray wire or gray cable plugs into and then I'm gonna hook it up with this newer type so to the three pin connector it's a, at the same location looks exactly the same way you plug in the gray the black one goes where it says line and there this white from the cord goes where it says neutral and connect the motor any which way you feel like to the remaining two uh, terminals so there we have it this circuit board mounts with two screws one goes here and the other one goes on the other side over here I'll just put in one so it's faster to assemble and and then we just have to put the lid on basically there but before we put the lid on let's plug it in and let's see how this one works flawlessly flawlessly Alright, so that's that. Then put the lid over everything, like so. The lid has four screws. Two's on, two screws are on this side, and two screws mirror opposite on the other side. I'm sure you can put the, those four screws in without watching me do it. And um, last thing is put the band on. This band mounts with one more screw at the back, and. Uh, just tighten it and that's how it's gonna look like there when it's in position there just put the screw in alrighty so that's basically all there is to this assembly